trivia question. Do you know what the most common side effect of IVIG is? Hmm? Let's talk about it. All right, so we are talking about IVIG common side effects and some of the more dangerous side effects. I know that for most of these videos, I've gone on saying that IVIG is very well tolerated, low incidence of really, you know, bad side effects and most people adjust. However, uh, you know, there are a few side effects that definitely gives us pause. But before we get into that, let's talk about some of the more common but benign side effects that you might experience going through IVIG. Also, if you haven't watched the other videos on what is IVIG, the Immune System 101, Subcutaneous IVIG, a lot of good information in, in them, so check them out first because this video will make a lot more sense if you do. Uh, okay, so side effects. They suck. They do. Um, with IVIG, my, my answer to any side effect is usually hydrate. Drink as much water as you're comfortable with about 48 hours prior to your infusion. The most common side effect of IVIG is a headache. And if you watched my last video on IVIG, you'll know it's probably the worst headache, potentially, that you could have had in your life. It can be, it can be a kicker, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, so the thing with the headache is IVIG is what we call a titrated infusion, meaning that the nurse will hook you up to your infusion and she's not going to start you out at a marathon or, or a sprinting pace. You know, she's, she's not gonna to kick you up at your top rate, you know, that she sets the infusion rate at. She's going to start you at a nice, slow, lazy river kind of drift. And she's gonna take your vitals pretty frequently and talk to you and see how you're feeling. And then gradually, as she sees your vitals are remaining stable, and when I say vitals, I mean your temperature, your heart rate, your blood pressure, and your respirations. Um, if she sees that they're, they're holding steady, then she'll have a rate that she bumps you up to. So it, it's kind of a tiered level. She'll start you out at, you know, for argument's sake, let's say uh, 60 milliliters an hour. And then within a half an hour, if she sees you're doing okay, she'll then increase that to 100 milliliters an hour um, and so on. So in, in this situation with the headache, it is really important for you, if you feel one coming on, to tell her right away because if you catch it before she increases that rate, then you might be able to avoid it and stave it off completely. Um, especially the first few infusions, you're both kind of learning what you're about. You know, the nurse is learning your tolerance levels and, and how high she can go and how quickly uh, and maintain your, your comfort level. And you're seeing how you respond. You know, do I get a headache at all? Maybe I won't. Do I get some nausea? Do I have the fever and the chills going on? So you're both kind of like learning the ropes with each other. So it's important to communicate. Um, but if you hydrate, it really goes a long way in preventing the serious headache that you can get. Um, and we've seen usually that the quicker that rate is ramped up, you know, if, if maybe the nurse is really thinking that, you know, she's not really taking into account what you're feeling, she's just looking at a rate sheet that was sent to her by the pharmacy and saying, okay, after 15 minutes, I can increase the patient to this rate. And she does that without really asking you, how are you feeling? 
you know, if your vital signs are still within normal limits, but maybe they're just starting to move off the mark, she might still increase that rate. And that might set you up for one of these side effects, especially the headache. So communication, again, I can't repeat it enough. Very important. Um, and hydrate. The, the more diluted the infusion is, the better, the easier it is on your body. Um, the next common side effect you can get is just some fatigue, or they call it uh, malaise. This is kind of like your flu-like symptoms where you're just kind of feeling maybe a little restless, listless, you know, maybe a little achy. Um, maybe you just kind of feel zapped and you just want to sleep. And that can come on. And again, hydration does definitely help with that as well, but that's a common one. And you can experience all of these, you know, not only for the day of your infusion, but for several days after the infusion. Um, and gradually over time as you infuse, again, you and your nurse should kind of learn each other and it usually does not stay as it did with the first or you know second infusion. You're, you're usually a little bit better at anticipating your side effects and, and taking measures to ward them off, whether that's additional doses of your pre-medications like Tylenol or Benadryl, um, or maybe your doctor might say, okay, my patient's had this headache every time for the last few cycles. So at this time, I think I'm not gonna leave it up to them to drink. I think I'm gonna have the nurse run a bag of normal saline before the infusion and after, just to supplement their own oral hydration when they drink. Or, you know, depending on what's going on and the reason you are infusing IVIG to begin with is they might order a steroid. Um, you know, the steroid they usually try and hold off on because nobody really wants to take steroids if they don't need to. But, you know, I, I've seen steroids definitely have their place and they can make an infusion bearable if you're really struggling with it. Uh, okay, so we, we talked about migraine, we talked about the fatigue that you can get. Um, you can get some nausea. Some people actually will vomit. You can get some GI upset, diarrhea even. Um, I see this, but I don't see it as frequently as I do the headache and maybe just the nausea. Um, but nevertheless, you know, if you do also experience this, they can prescribe Zofran or some anti-emetic, uh, something to calm the stomach a little bit so that you're more comfortable each time. And then you can also have a fever or chills. So this is your body just responding to the fact that you're, you're infusing antibodies into it. So this is going to, this is going to alert your immune system like, What's going on here? Who are all these guys? Like, this is my house. But, and your body, you know, it'll kick up a little. A little fever, a little chills. Um, and then you can have some skin itching. You can actually develop a little rash. And that's what the Benadryl's for. So, they'll give you Benadryl in anticipation that you might have some of this. And this is just kind of your average run-of-the-mill you know, allergic type reaction, but it's not, there's an allergic type reaction where you get some skin itching and then there's the anaphylactic type reaction, which is the one that everybody worries about with IVIG, which is the, I need epinephrine, I can't breathe, my face is swollen to the uh -oh. size of a moon and I have hives all over my body. That situation, the anaphylaxis situation, is actually not as common as everyone thinks it is with IVIG. 5% um, or under, usually fewer than 5% of people will actually have a full-blown anaphylactic reaction. However, in the delivery that your specialty pharmacy will send over, uh, in it will be something called an ANA kit, short for anaphylaxis kit. And that kit will have additional doses of uh, Tylenol, additional Benadryl given 
IV um, solumedrol, which is a steroid, and epinephrine, which is the holy grail of anaphylaxis medications. This is what you basically see in an EpiPen. Um, sometimes the EpiPen will be there. Other times your nurse will have to draw that up and administer that to you herself. But before she does anything, she will check to make sure that that anakit is there. Otherwise, she can't even start the infusion. So rest assured. Uh, but it is good for you to know that and to you know check with her and kind of be like, did you did you check see if that's there? Is it there? Is the anakit there? Just in case, you know. Um, okay, so there are all the common side effects that some, you know, a lot of people might get some version of. Uh, they're pretty common. The not so common ones we're going to talk about next, and these are the ones that I will have people asking me, like, I heard it can cause kidney failure or renal failure. I heard it can cause stroke, or I heard it can cause, uh, brain damage. So with IVIG, because of the nature of this medication and the fact that technically it is a blood product, it comes with some serious risks. Even though it is a very safe medication that we've used for the past 40 years, it's, it's not without its own risks. And uh, so one of these serious issues is they, you, they need to be careful of giving it with people who are already in chronic renal failure because your kidneys are your filters of the body. And when you're putting a medication such as IVIG in, the, in, in your system, your kidneys are responsible for filtering out and, that, and through you know, that medication in your system. So if you're already down a man, and your kidney function is not exactly great, this should be an area of concern for your physician if he is or she is looking to prescribe IVIG. Um, another situation is a lot of people will say, well, I, I heard this can cause blood clots. And yes, this is true. One of the potential serious side effects of IVIG is thrombosis. Uh, which is just your body forming clots. You know, it's it's your blood blood coagulating, and you know this has the the potential to break off and go to your lung or your brain, causing stroke or you know pulmonary embolus or something like that. Very very serious issues. Um, so if you have a history of clotting issues or you know, if you're already taking anticoagulants like Coumadin or Plavix or, um, I forget the name of the other one, but anyway, uh, yeah, you know, that's definitely a consideration that we would kind of keep an eye on. Uh, and then finally, the last thing is something called aseptic meningitis. So what is aseptic meningitis, Danielle, exactly? So this occurs when an, a dose of IVIG has been given and it causes irritation of the membranes that line the brain and spinal cord. And these are called the meninges and there's three of them. The innermost layer is the pia layer or mater it's called. The next one is the subarachnoid layer. And then the outer one is called the dural or dura mater. And for those of you who have had an epidural before, you might be familiar with this because epi means above and dura or dural is the, it's referring to the dural membrane. Um, so onset of aseptic meningitis is anywhere from 48 to 72 hours after a dose of IVIG and it presents or the side effects that that come about are a progressively worsening headache. And I'm talking about a real kicker of a headache. Uh, you can have photosensitivity, meaning light sensitivity. 
any bright light or any light at all, it, it feels like somebody's stabbing an ice pick in your head. That sounds terrible. Can you imagine? Anyway, um, you can have some nausea and vomiting. Clearly, when you have anything going on neurologically like this, it's going to cause a lot of, of pressure like that and cause some nausea and vomiting. And uh, the last is you get nuchal rigidity or a rigid neck, meaning your neck is so stiff and so sore that it just it hurts to move. Um, there's a lot of debate as to the actual incidence of a septic meningitis. Um, there's some that say it's extremely rare, anywhere from zero to 1% only. And then there's others that, well, not others. There's, I think, one article that's been published saying that it's actually around 11%. And the thing is, is, you know, I've actually talked to people that have come down with aseptic meningitis after an IVIG dose. And it is no joke. It is seriously painful and just really, really rough. Um, people will usually go and seek medical care, obviously for this when they have a headache that comes on like this. And the care that's given is usually supportive IV fluids, maybe support pain medication, things like that. So these are, are four of the um, more serious side effects that we look for with IVIG. Uh, and they can happen. So this is the reason I'm doing these videos is to arm you with this information so that if your doctor does happen to mention starting you on one of these therapies, you can sit there and say, okay, well, that's great, but what about thrombosis and renal disease? Yeah, serious considerations if you're, you're looking to start on this therapy. So if you have any questions, drop a comment below. I love to hear what you have to say, you know, or your experiences. I'd love to hear about your experiences with IVIG and uh, what side effects that, you know, you may have experienced and, and what worked for you. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. So click right here and I'll see you there.